I like uh, big boats, and I cannot lie. <laughs> Welcome to a somewhat different episode of Funger Runs, where we put the serious back into the fun. I'm Dr. Fubar. Today we're going to go over the patch notes for update 13.3.7, the flagship, if you'll excuse the pun, feature of which is the new Czechoslovakian Navy. The Czechoslovakian Navy is going to start with three ships, two Tier 1s and a Tier 10. The Czechoslovakian Navy releases with a new river-based map, uh, the Prague map, this is because anyone who's looked at a early 20th century map of Europe will know that Czechoslovakia was completely landlocked, making it an odd choice for wargaming to include, but apparently the community has been clamouring this for some time, according to the patch notes. Unfortunately, neither myself nor Tango have really got to grips with any of the Czechoslovakian boats, so we'll get into those in another video. The other main feature Wargaming has decided to add is a new collectible system, whereby messages and bottles can be found on all of the maps. The number of bottles varies on each map, and each one is only collectible by one player in each map, resulting in an odd rush at the start of matches, which changes the dynamics of any match that has the collectibles in it. Uh, they're seeded at random. Because of this, Tango and myself have only managed to collect uh, an entire set for one map so far, that being the Two Brothers map. On the Two Brothers map, the collectibles uh, each give us a single word, and when collected, they form a sentence which is, Rush the middle, I dare you. There's also a new inclusion of virtual reality support for owners of the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift. Uh, Tango has taken his for a test drive, and reports that the visual quality from standing on the deck of your ship is stunning at the commander's eye view, Unfortunately, it is also a bit eerie uh, with the feeling of the Mary Celeste having no other crew on board and guns rotating and firing seemingly by themselves. Also, there is no way to see the keyboard, so in practice, it greatly reduces your ability to play the game, make it more of an aesthetic uh, option as opposed to a practical one. They've added in a uh, Rage Quick Command, which at least gets the salty players salt over with sooner. They've added an option to set the in-game language to Pirate. This is, of course, an extension of the Pirate Audio option that has already existed in the game for some time. A subject I can't really talk about very much is they've added a World of Tanks Blitz client into the game for Battleship players. So that as they move into position, or as the new is the case in the new paradigm of the game, the Battleship players chase vainly after the collectibles on the map. Uh, they've enabled uh, playing World of Tank Blitz in-game. The Soviet ship line has been universally buffed in order to represent their historical superiority. Now, whilst I applaud any moves towards greater historical accuracy in the game, simply replacing all the Soviet ship stats with the word strong and giving them laser ammunition might have been a bit much, in my opinion. Not, not including the patch notes was the addition of the submarines, which many of you may have seen you got for free in your port, the approximately tier 5 submarine, for free. Yes, this is, that is an experimental feature. I would be aware of the submarines. Whilst the submarine play is fun, the first few games it quickly gets old, not having any actual guns and only using torpedoes. Uh... But what really gets old is the fact that submarines don't appear in team lists. They're added at random, just so you don't know they're there. The 16th time I got sunk by a submarine, I kind of got bored of it, I'll be honest. It was a nice idea, a fun experiment, but I really hope the Wargaming backtracks on that one. The USS Robin is to be added into the game, a premium US Navy carrier, uh, Tier 8. Uh, of course, more premium carriers has been desired for a long time. The USS Robin's main reason for its introduction, of course, is as a precursor to the HMS Hood. The Yamato's firing range has been increased from 26km to 42km, another historical accuracy change. 
the thing is that because none of the maps in World of Warships are large enough to accommodate a 42 kilometer range, the Yamato can now shoot into neighboring matches. Again, in theory, uh, we believe that this change was implemented to enable cross-match clan support. So that if you have a clan mate who's in a nearby match and you're in a Yamato and you have no targets of your own, you can assist your clan mates by shooting into their matches. Unfortunately, this is not a restricted feature and just means if a Yamato misses and fires off the map, it'll fly into the next map. Or, as I've found, Yamatos often spend the first couple of minutes of any given match shooting at random into nearby matches. And much like the submarine play, the 16th time I got citadeled by a Yamato in a tier 5 match, because it's shooting in from the match next door, it got pretty old pretty quickly. Uh, finally in this section, the HMS Warspite has been updated for developers and super testers. Uh, they are experimenting with the Warspites that can only load HE ammunition to bring it more in line with the British ships having only one form of ammunition. The cruisers get AP, the battleships are going to get HE. Uh, However, what's not mentioned in the patch notes is that this version of HMS Warspite also has a smoke screen. The first battleship to get one. Uh, I think this is really going to change the dynamics of play. But, obviously, we aren't super testers or developers, so we haven't got to experiment with this yet. There will be a review of that once it hits the main servers. Then there's perhaps the most welcome change of the patch, as that is that the Japanese premium tier 6 battleship Mutsu has finally been patched to stop exploding in port. This was a course of great distress to anyone who bought a Mutsu, having the damn thing explode at random intervals and the game requiring a restart in order to use it in a match. Unfortunately, this has been counteracted by the Yamato buff, where Yamato's... Uh, firing at particularly oblique angles off the side of the map can fire into port and explode your Mutsu anyway. So, Wargaming giveth, Wargaming taketh away. Moving on, uh, Pirate Hats are now unlockable for commanders once you hit them to maximum level. Uh, Wargaming have promised eye patches in uh, future updates. Now onto the big, big update for Japanese lines. All Japanese lines now have an optional kawaii mode for extra cuteness. Wargaming states that this makes Japanese ships 56% more adorable. Unfortunately, in practice, it turns out what Wargaming finds adorable is citadels. So this means that all Japanese ships have citadels that are 56% larger than before this patch, which is a real problem for Furutaka drivers who are already 100% citadel. So Furutakas are now 156% citadel. The other big drawback of this feature is that the recent update to allow ship names to appear on the minimap, and also ship names uh, above ships in-game, have all been changed from the actual ship name to Senpai, to enable Senpai to notice you. Noticing is also, also far more likely for destroyers, increasing their detection range by 20 kilometers. However, ugly battleships have their detection range reduced, uh, graphical update promises that in-game water is now 23% wetter. Now this is a change I'm particularly unhappy with because it now means that I must play war I must play World of Warships with a towel on hand uh, because my fingers get damp. This has become a particular problem with uh, players who have water-cooled PCs such as Tango. He tells me that uh, leaks have been springing, that there has been interference and short-circuiting within his machine but according to Tango, it's entirely worth it for the graphical update. Uh, I'm dubious. Now, here come to a section that I am, for once, wholeheartedly behind, and that is the game's audio updates. We have some clips of these, and it'll be easier to show you them than to explain them. The big three are the Oh No You Didn't sound emote. Oh No You Didn't. Uh, which... Very satisfying, but we're still waiting on the sorry for British and Canadian players. There is also a option to enable sad violin music whenever your ship is sinking, uh, so long as you are directly looking at the sinking ship.
uh, Wargaming state that they are in negotiations for the rights to the Titanic theme. But uh, Celine Dion is said to be holding out on that one. Uh, there's a big argument over the royalties. Finally, there's an option to replace the in-game music entirely with sea shanties. Sea shanties is a bit of an overstatement. This is only what should we do with the drunken sailor by the Irish Rovers on loop. What will we do with the drunken However, sailor? What will we do with this the is still a sailor? very what welcome addition, the and I hope sailor? they expand the roster in the future. Finally, uh, Wargaming have offered anybody who f completes reading the patch notes a free puppy from a Czech animal shelter, which is being bulldozed uh, next week in order to make room for the new Czech Navy harbour in-game. Me and Tango have both emailed for our puppies, and Wargaming say they should arrive within three to five working days. As you can see, this update 13.3.7 is, at the very least, going to be controversial when it lands tomorrow. I'm not sure how the player base will react to this. As I said, we here at Fungin Runs have mixed feelings at best. Uh, features such as the sea shanties are very welcome, but the Czech Navy and the Russian rebalance have caused issues with how fun the game is. So... Well, we'll have to see where it goes from here. This has been Dr. Fubar from the Fungin Runs Newsroom, signing out. <laughs>